All right, so I've been wanting to provide an update on the 4.6 stroker engine that I put in my Jeep about nine months ago. So the very first time I took it out on a semi long distance run, I took it to Death Valley back in March. Now the weather was cool and it was a great time to take it on a quick little road trip out to Dumont Dunes. It was awesome, I had some fun with it out on the dunes and it was uh, exactly what I was hoping for. I had a lot more power going up and down mountain passes. I didn't have to downshift the second gear, stayed in third gear the whole time and going up the 15 freeway through Cajon Pass, which is a pass just outside of San Bernardino that takes you up to the high desert. It did great. I could do 65 miles an hour just fine, uh, mostly in overdrive. Fast forward to June and with the weather being warmer and my wife and I wanting to take a mini vacation, we decided let's take the Jeep up to Lake Tahoe and test the engine out on the mountain passes between our home in Southern California and Lake Tahoe. We would take 395 up the Eastern Sierras to get there. Now, I had a small issue with one of my injector wires. Uh, the soldering that I did when I did the wiring harness came loose and so I had a misfire on injector three or cylinder three. And so I decided, well, let me just go ahead and replace it. Uh, I happened to be in Alabama Hills at the time and it was fine, it was good to go. However, I just wanna point out that since then, I did replace a lot of those injector wires with uh, a connector made by Standard, which is a way better connector than these cheap uh, Amazon knockoff connectors that I bought originally. The gauge on the wire is much thicker. After we left Alabama Hills, uh, we had to make our way from Bishop up to Mammoth, and that section of 395 takes you up to Sherwin Summit. Now this long grade takes you from 4,000 feet to 6,200 feet in about five or six miles. So it's a really nice, steady grade. And it was a great way to test the Jeep. And with ambient temperatures being about 85 to 90, uh, with the AC off, I was getting 235 degrees uh, on my Torque Pro. All right, we're making our way up uh, Sherwin Grade. It's this long, steady climb that climbs about 2,500 feet out of Bishop towards Mammoth. Keep going, baby, keep going. You got this. 55, almost at the top. Now I have the Mopar OEM coolant temperature sensor because that's the most accurate from what I've read. And I have that in my thermostat housing in the original location. And I have taken a thermal gun and I've tested at the thermostat housing with what I'm reading on the Torque Pro. And it's very accurate. I mean, it's within a degree, maybe two degrees. And so I'm, I'm pretty confident that what I'm reading on my Torque Pro is exactly what the sensor is reading in the thermostat housing. Now on the late model XJs like mine, mine's a 99, the temperature gauge, the needle gauge that's in the dash uh, is misleading. And I say that because when the mark is at the 210, uh, it is 210, slightly above is 215, slightly above that's 220. And when you get to the very next hash mark, that's not 220, that's 235. When you get to the next hash mark, you're closer to 247. And when you reach that mark, you're kind of teeter-tottering on that temperature just climbing all the way to the end. I, I don't remember exactly what temperature it is, but right around 247 to 250, it just jumps all the way to the end. Um, so you gotta be careful there. So my goal was to keep it under 230. That was my goal. Uh, now, one of my biggest fears going into this build was keeping it cool. Now, I live in Southern California, and where I live, it's not uncommon in the summer to get temperatures up to 110, 112 degrees. And so I knew that the 4.6 liter was gonna run a little bit warmer than the factory four liter did. Now, I have the Mopar uh, water pump, I have the Mishimoto radiator, and I was running the TYC 
auxiliary fan, electric fan that you could buy on Amazon as a OEM replacement uh, for the Mopar one. Now what I found out is that uh, on our way to Tahoe, I was getting 235 degrees, like I said, and I wasn't happy with that. Now it didn't overheat, but I still wasn't happy. So when we got back home, um, July hit and all of a sudden we got this, this massive heat wave. And I started to notice that while I was in traffic with the AC on and ambient temperatures being 110, 112, it was climbing up to 235, 240 degrees at one point. So I was a little concerned and I thought, well, if it's only happening at idle, then that's telling me that I'm not getting enough airflow um, from the mechanical fan or the auxiliary fan. And the reason being is that your auxiliary fan has to compensate uh, for idling because your mechanical fan is only pulling so much CFM at idle. Now, when you rev the engine uh, up to 2,500 to 3,000 RPMs, you know that mechanical fan is, is drawing a ton of airflow. But I can't sit there in traffic and just rev my engine. So I decided that, you know what, I, I don't trust that TYC auxiliary fan. So I purchased a SPAL fan. It's a 10 inch, I believe, model, uh, 10 or 11 inch. Um, I'll put the link in, in the video. But I took that fan and I built an aluminum housing for it and I wired it into the Jeep with a manual override switch. And I can tell right away, when I hooked up both fans, I can tell the difference was um, night and day. And, and, and I really mean it. It was drawing so much air compared to the TYC. I had a feeling, okay, this was gonna solve my, my idling problems, and it did. Uh, no more was I getting 240 or even 235. Uh, with 112 degree ambient temperature, the AC on, my auxiliary fan running, uh, my temperature stayed at 222, 225 max. Uh, and I felt really confident about that. However, when I was driving on the freeway or I was driving on the highway, I noticed that I was starting to creep up to that 230, 235 frequently without even going up a mountain pass. I determined that, you know, the one thing I didn't replace on this Jeep trying to save money doing the stroker was the AC condenser. Now I looked at it and yes, it was pitted and it had some bent fins, but I could still see through it. But I thought, you know what, what's it hurt? So I went and bought a brand new AC condenser along with an orifice tube and a dryer slash accumulator because when you have to replace and drain the AC system, you might as well do all of those, otherwise you're not gonna get the humidity out of the system. So I replaced everything, and just doing a side-by-side -side comparison on the AC condenser, the new one, I could tell right away that I could see through it a lot clearer than I could the old one. And I thought, okay, maybe this, maybe I'm onto something. So I replaced it. And, and I took it for a drive and just driving around town on the freeway, no more did I get those temperatures up to 235. I was getting maybe 222 to 228, depending upon how fast I was going. And I thought, okay, well, this is, this is pretty good. I mean, considering that it's 110, 112, and I have the AC on and I'm moving down the highway, this is really good. I was happy with it. And so now it was time to take it for a test run. I took my nephew up to the Sierras on a wheeling and camping trip. And this time we were gonna go back to Red Lake, Coyote Lake to do some rock crawling. Now this area is uh, just north of Fresno, Clovis. You make your way up this grade on Highway 168. That takes you from Clovis around a thousand feet up to Shaver Lake, which is 6,000 feet. And you've got to make this 5,000 foot grade within a short 20 mile span. I knew that this was going to be an even bigger test than the Sherwin Summit because it was 106 
in Clovis and it was 85 up at Shaver Lake or 82 degrees. I was loaded down, it was 5,200 pounds because I took the Jeep to a cat scale just to get an accurate reading of how much my Jeep weighed. And I was at 5,200 pounds and that's not even fully loaded with 10 gallons of fuel and 10 gallons of water like I would normally do on a desert trip. At 5,200 pounds, this was gonna be a good test. I turned the AC off, again, I'm not trying to kill the engine, and third gear, 50 to 55 miles an hour, I got up to 230. I can't really ask for anything more, so I'm pretty confident that all of my cooling concerns have been um, satisfied or taken away <laughs> or met or solved, uh, so, I'm happy about that because that was one of the concerns I had early on. If I could give anybody some advice when you are looking at doing a 4.6, I highly recommend going through your cooling system. And even if your AC condenser looks good, um, you know, you're already in it for the stroker and your, your costs are already there. Don't try to save 150 to $200 on on the AC condenser, just do it. For sure, go with the SPAL fan. Don't trust the TYC. Maybe it's good for the four liter, maybe it's good for, for a Jeep that doesn't weigh 5,200 pounds, but essentially I'm towing a trailer everywhere I go because of the weight of this Jeep. So just go with that SPAL fan. So there's the update. Uh, so thanks again for watching. Um, I highly encourage you to do it. Get a hold of Russ Pottinger get the kit and you'll be completely satisfied with the extra power in your Jeep.